Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. And when I saw him, now who is who is talking here? Does anybody know? John, John the Revelator. John the Revelator. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto him, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Who is the first and the last? Yeah, Jesus. Jesus. The revelation. He said, I am he that liveth and was dead. There's only one person that was living, that was dead, that's now alive. What's his name? Jesus. Jesus. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Who's alive forevermore? Jesus. He is the first of the resurrected sons. How many know we're, there's been many joining him since? And he says, and have the keys of hell and of death. Now, keys is what unlocks or locks something, correct? Yes. Keep that point right there. Because Satan likes to make himself bigger than what he is. The Bible says he goes around as a roaring lion. Does it say that he is one? Right. Right? right. So, if you're saved, then death has no fear over you. Not saying I'm looking to get out of here anytime soon, right? Hell has no hold over you. And all the things that come from hell, guess what? Have no hold over you. And if he has the keys, now you have the keys to death and hell. Now, don't get it twisted. Don't be, now, There's been some twisted religions over some of these statements. But that means that it, if a uh, if it's bound already, or if you want to bind it, you can bind it and send it back to the pits of hell and lock it up there. Y'all getting something? Yeah. Verse 19, write these things which you have seen and the things which are, the things which shall be hereafter. So that's just Jesus telling him, you better write this down. You better make notes. I'm going to say it again. You better make notes. This is important. All the things he wrote in Revelation was important, but he wanted them to realize that he had the keys to death, hell, and the grave. And we have we see that in other places in the Bible. And that's important to realize that if he has them, you have them because you're co-heirs with Christ. Someone's around. I need some more. Why do you think they, they, the disciples were able to go around and uh, bind demons and cast them out? Because they had authority over them. Up until that point, the demons had authority over people and tormented them until angels showed up. You see, that's why people, but people tolerate so much stuff, not realizing they had the keys in their hand all the time. Or maybe they've opened some doorways they shouldn't open themselves and allow the devil just to waltz right in. Y'all still with me? Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly. Now, you guys have heard me quote this verse a bunch of times in my WWE reference and all that. But he says, try all opening over them in it. How many know that Jesus triumphed over them? Amen. How many know he made a show of them openly? Amen. How many know he doesn't need to do it again? Amen. How many know that he doesn't need to do it again? Amen. I'm going to say it again. How many know that he doesn't need to do it again? Amen. But how many times have you begged him to do it again? When he is waiting for you to take the authority and the keys that you have and do something with it yourself. Come on. When you say, I rebuke that, I bind that to the pits of hell in Jesus' name, if you believe that in faith, then something just happened in the spirit realm. Now, some of you will find that easy to do for somebody else, but the key thing is you can't give what you ain't got. You can't do it for yourself first. You're really not doing it for anybody else either. So let's start practicing today. 
Bible says, take every thought captive that exalts itself above the mind of Christ. Where do those thoughts come from? Let's just say the pits of hell for reference today, because that's ultimately where they come from. And Jesus already made a show of them openly. So you can bind every one of those thoughts. You don't have to keep wrestling with them. Wrestling ain't going to help nobody. Come on. Well, you don't understand, for you can be shocked. You know, do you know why you're anxious? Because you don't believe the Word of God fully yet. How do you know that? Because I was once a very anxious person, concerned about things, all kinds of things. But when I started fully trusting God and binding the right things and loosing the right things, things started to change. And the more I seen the word of God come to true, the more I was able to release into him. That was free. Matthew 16, 18. I say also unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my what? Church. Church. Now, I believe in building the kingdom of God. We're going to talk about the kingdom of God very soon. But that does not diminish the fact that God established a church. And the church is inside each one of us. It's not this building. It's inside <laughs> us. But when we come together, we make the church. Now, buildings are important because they are tools used for God for his church. And every, even Jesus went to the temple. Paul went to the temple. The disciples went to the temple. So the Hebrews 10 says, do not forsake yourselves, assembling yourselves together. That's a large people group. So guess what? We all need to come into a building together as a church. But we are the church. All right? So what's he saying to the church here? Y'all read it with me. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So everybody is all worked up. Listen, I, like I said many times, I'm not against I love America, but if you spent much time in third world countries, you would see blessed people living among some of the biggest atrocities you've ever seen. Do I want that for America? Absolutely not. But guess what I've seen? The gates of hell have not prevailed against this church, no matter where it's at or what is going on. And if you get yourself all worked up about all those things, then somewhere in there you stop believing this and you started losing your keys. Y'all still with me? So, if the gates of hell won't prevail against the church, how many know you should be able to relax in that? You should be able to have some peace in that. No matter what it... Does that mean that we don't fight for what's right? Absolutely not. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm talking about, there's a difference between fighting for what's right and losing your peace. Losing your joy. Right? Right. So if the gates of hell, does it say they might prevail? Yeah. No. Shall not. No. So somebody look at your neighbor. Now let's make it personal. Say, the gates of hell. The gates of hell. Will not, prevail will not prevail against me because I'm, I'm part of the church. That'll make you want to swing out over hell in a corn stalk and spit in the devil's eye. Come on now. Let him just do something in you that you're dead. We need to lay hands on you. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. You're part of the church. It's the same thing that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now listen, if they're not going to prevail, it didn't say they weren't didn't say they weren't going to come against you. It just said they would not win. Right. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys. The keys. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, keys. Keys. Yeah. Keys of the kingdom. Now we're going to get the keys of the kingdom of heaven. How many know there's some awesome stuff in heaven? How many know Jesus said that when he told us how to pray? He said, Thy kingdom, thy will be done, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. 
How many know the kingdom of God resides inside each one of us? Amen. But you have to, you have the keys. That means you have to open some things up and let them flow. Let a rip, Taylor Chip. Come on. You gotta, you gotta get some of that stuff out there. And I'm not talking about this flashy, gooey, gooey, feel-good stuff that doesn't change anything. When the real keys of the kingdom have been opened, he came to seek and save those that are lost. And there's fruit in your life when it's happened. I love the glory of God. That is a byproduct of kingdom things happening. But it's not the main course. Y'all still with me? Come on, we have phenomenal altar services. But if y'all came up here every service and nothing changed inside, then it's just getting on you, not in you. Right, that's right. And we need to get it in you. So I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of God. Did he say I might? No. He said only when you're really good boys and girls. <laughs> he said, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of God. And whatsoever thou shalt bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. How can we bind it on earth? Because we already got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So now we're able to bind that stuff where it can't, it, it, it can't go around stirring stuff anywhere. And how many know that stuff does that? Well, let me put it to you another, another way this morning for frame of mind when I'm referencing here. If Jesus bound it, well, do you think he would have enough gumption to just walk up to the throne room and start trash talking Jesus? And when you bind it, the only place it can go, because who is your who is your, your your who's your lawyer? Who's your who's the one standing? I forget the exact word I'm looking for. Advocate, Advocate is the scripture says. So he would have to go to Jesus then after you bound it. They ain't going there. They don't want to go there. They would rather go into a, a whole herd of pigs and go deal with Jesus. And that's when he was on earth. So when you bind it here as a man or woman of God, do you really think they want to take and, and escalate, escalate that situation to have to go talk to Jesus? So if you bind it here, it's bound in heaven. It's done. It's finished. Anybody getting a hold of this this morning? Yes. They're not. They don't want to go talk to him. <laughs> I pass. Pass. I remember last time he made a show of all of us talking. Yes. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I mean, there's things in heaven that God wants to have down here upon the earth. Yes. Joy, peace. Healings, glory. Come on, he wants us to lose it. You know, Lord, I just I just lose the peace of God over these people this morning. Lord, you said what well, it would be done here, it'd be done there. And Lord, I just thank you that it's ascending and descending, and the peace of God is descending right now, Jesus. And right now, for everybody that just opened up their little keys. And said, I'll take some of that kingdom stuff. Just felt to got a small deposit of peace. Do you see how that works? One reason it worked is because everything works through the word of God, right? So I just took 30 minutes breaking it down for you. And some of you, this is the first time you've ever heard this concept in your life, but you had enough faith in the word that you just read and you took your little key, accessed it, and got something out of it. Well, praise God. Let's start doing it on a daily basis. Come on. If God's made you more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus, Right? Let's move on. There's one little statement right down here. This is really the title of today's message. Don't bow to what is already bound. The problem is, a lot of times we bind stuff 
and then we don't like the temperature in the room because it doesn't fit us. And we start sending all kinds of signals to those thermostats. And before long, we're at their mercy. They're not at our command. The Bible, let me make it simple for some of you on a different plane. The Bible says that if a, if a demon's cast out, if he finds the house empty, he'll go get seven more demons worse than the last one and come bring them in. After you bind something, if you go around messing with that stuff again, there's more than one side to this diamond. Just stay with me. And you go messing with that stuff again, he's going to go get seven more. Him and his buddies are going to pile up and wreak havoc in your house. And what thing was once bound is now going to start tormenting you. Now the same God that helped you bind it the first time can help bind you again. But you've got to break yourself free from all the stuff you just let back in. One way that addiction works. An enemy think, tells you you're bound and all these things. You were completely free. The monkey was off your back and had no control over you, but you decided you needed that thing. You went back and experimented with it. The devil said, Fine, <laughs> then we're not going to risk getting thrown out of here that easy. Again, next time, we're going to get more buddies and make you feel even more miserable. But the same power breaks it free, but the key is not to bow to something that's already been bound. How about, how about anxiety? If you bind it, how many know the Bible says that you can't change one hair on your head by worrying about it? Right? You can't add one stature, can't add one millimeter to your height even by thinking about it or worrying about it, right? Right? But you, the enemy will always give you something to worry about. I promise you. And the more, more real estate in your, in your mind and your spirit you give it, the bigger the thing will get. But you can take authority over it. You say, well, I got prayer Sunday and I bound that thing and it was all fine. Well, yeah, but Monday afternoon you bowed to it again. And you threw the keys right back out the window. Well, I hurt, Pastor. I had things going on. I just need to find some way to fix me. I need the right doctor. You got the best doctor. His name's Jesus. There's not a person in this room that hasn't bowed to something that they once had bound. But the key I'm going to bring to you is I don't believe I've ever heard anybody speak on it. And it's something the Lord just really brought to me very fresh. And we have, I believe we have to really watch bowing to things we've already bound. Are y'all hearing my heart this morning? Do you see this in the scripture? I didn't just pull this out of my hat, did I? We just went over this, okay? Look, it's still early. I've only got one scripture left. Can you believe that? I had a whole page full. 2 Corinthians 2.14 Now thanks be unto God which one? Always. Come on, say it again. Always. Always causes us to triumph in Christ. Do you know how long it took me to believe that as a young believer? Longer than I care to admit. Well, when I was very first saved, I thought I could do everything. It wasn't until I started really having to work through my salvation with fear and trembling that it got a little more difficult. And then you had people that would say dumb things or people that didn't want to deal with their own, their own doorway, so they'd make excuses. You need, to not, you need to make sure you're not letting somebody... The enemy, will all, for one, will always make sure there's an excuse and a justification himself. And then if, that, then if he needs help, he, I promise you, he's got enough people on the lukewarm team to bring them around and give you a, a bunch more excuses about why you don't need to be standing in faith for whatever you're standing in faith for. And then that causes you to believe, well, I believe we can try up in most things. This is just something i got to deal with. Oh, praise God. <coughs> I, I'm resisting all kinds of things. I know, I know Pastor Timmy told me a little bit Wednesday night, thank you for the prayers. I wouldn't be here today. Appreciate it. But, uh, you know, 
the moment that I stop believing that I always triumph in Christ Jesus, I might as well just go crawl in a grave and be dead. Because I'm sure going to be miserable. Right? right? But if I have the keys to the kingdom, why would I settle for anything less than the kingdom? If I've got the keys to the kingdom, why would I settle for anything less than the kingdom? If I've got the keys to death, hell, and the grave, why would I put up with anything from those? Why would I? And, and I don't, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't mean it arrogantly. It's, there's demonic things don't like to be around me. And if the person they're on won't get rid of them themselves, then they will, they will get away from me. They get very uncomfortable around me. And I like it that way. I don't want to be comfortable because if I get my hands on them, they're going to get kicked back to hell where they belong. And I'm going to lose a little kingdom inside that person and give them a little joy and peace. But if I do it and I don't teach them, they're going to be in worse shape than what they was when they met me. Because they'll just go back and give the keys back to the devil and he'll wreak havoc in their life. So this morning, I'm telling you, you've got keys. I got a whole huge ring of keys, but if I don't use them, they do me no good. You've got the keys to the kingdom. You've got the keys to death, hell, and the grave. What are you doing with them? And whatever you do, don't bow but back down to something that's already bound. Well, I got the same symptoms I had yesterday. Praise God, you got the same Jesus you had yesterday. Amen. By his stripes, you were healed. But I'm still, I'm still dealing with stuff. Are you still taking authority, or are you just throw, did you throw those keys out the window? See, we want not only do we want the keys, we want somebody to open and close them for us. But keys were made for somebody to do the work. Come on. That means you have to, remember what it said in Mark chapter 11? It says, whosoever can say, can ask water and say into this mountain, be removed. How do you do that? Because you got the keys to the kingdom. You got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. That's how you whosoever can say whatsoever. And when you do that, things happen. But it happens by faith. Faith turns the key. Woo! 